This is an induction motor I pulled from an upright fan. Now, induction motors are perhaps the most popular fractional horsepower motor, certainly in the US, although here in the UK we do tend to use universal motors a little bit more. But these can be converted into generators. Now, we looked at that in video 500, where we basically took some uh, capacitors and we converted it to an actual generator. However, they can also equally be converted into something called a switch reluctance generator generator that we did in video 1053 with the shaded pole motor. But I wanted to do it with an actual induction motor that's pulled just from something because uh, reluctance mo motors and reluctance generators are becoming the thing. The great thing about reluctance generators is they can be bolted onto a wind turbine and you don't need a gearbox. That is absolutely awesome. They are also incredibly cheap. I mean, these are cheaply made anyway, but actually they're quite good motors, but induction generators are very little more than little bits of pressed steel, and that's kind of really awesome because you don't have to do that much to it to make yourself a fairly decent generator. Now, clearly I'm taking this apart so we can have a look at the inside. So there's an end plate with a bearing in it. Here is our stator and rotor. There we go. And there is the rotor. And that's what you'd expect from induction motor. And there is the stator. Now we need to make changes to the arm work, which is a bit of a shame because those coils are in the way. So we have to remove them. We need to chop that in half and chop that into a bar. When I say half, you actually cut out the middle pole. Here it is with the middle pole cut out. And I've just rested it back in place so you can see what it's going to look like, which is like that. And here is the actual rotor now cut into a bar. Let's have a close up. Okay, that's its setup. Now this is how switch reluctance works. What we do is in that gap we stick some magnets so that that's a north and that's a north and that's a south and that's a south. And clearly there's no path for magnetic flux unless the rotor is in this position, in which case the north facing here can go to the south facing there and we get a switch reluctance path and equally the opposite happens there and then when it's in that position there's just no path at all. So we can use that property to change the magnetic field in this core and of course changing magnetic field means we'll generate. It also means we're kind of only halfway through the modifications that we make because we want that position to also have no path so we need to remove these poles. If we remove those poles then we also create a space to wind our new okay, coils. Okay, the poles out I've ground off a hacksaw blade so it's thin enough to get in the gap, turn around and be able to saw that pole off. Now it's cut out, we can put some tape on there to protect against sharp edges and wind a couple of new coils, being careful that the coil doesn't project beyond there. And there it is with the coils in place, and now all we have to do is put the magnets here and here and bolt the whole thing back together. And that's it back together. There are the magnets and there are the coils. Now let's so give it a... So these things are actually being touted as the ideal generator for wind turbines. Certainly if you look at the literature then there's an awful lot of respect for these because of so many reasons. I mean, um, they've only wear on the bearings so they're going to last an awful long time. They're extraordinarily cheap to make because they're made out of very little more than pressed steel. Easy to wind the coils and they don't need connecting to a gearbox which is pretty cool. So obviously the next thing to do is to get that into some kind of wind turbine and give it a test and see what we're actually getting out of it. But there we go, that is how you go about making a switch reluctance generator. You separate the magnetic path and the path goes through the rotor. Now that rotor is very, very light, so it takes nothing at all to spin it, which is exactly what we want. So I thought I would show you that. We'll get that into a wind turbine and we'll see what actually happens with it in a real life situation, but that's how you go about making one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.